Memory filtration is often misunderstood, uh, especially for beginner students. Uh, so let's go through feed, retentate and permeate and think through carefully what you will find in the different flows. Let's consider a situation where you have a feed containing bacteria, protein, sugar and salt. And uh, the size of these different compounds is approximate like if the salt would be a mosquito, then sugar is the size of a bumblebee and uh, proteins are the size of a frog and bacteria are the size of elephants. So a pretty large size difference, right? And if you send this into a microfiltration unit with a pore diameter of somewhere between 0.1 and 10 micrometers, what will you find in the retentate and what will you find in the permeate? Pause here and try to, to figure out that yourself. Okay, in the retentate you will find everything. I take that again. In the retentate you will find everything. So bacteria, protein, sugar and salt. Everything will be fine in the retentate. While in the permeate, well, the bacteria are too, too big to pass through the membrane. So the bacteria uh, can't pass through. But the protein, sugar and salt, for them, the system looks like nothing. There is no, there is no separation going on here. It's just uh, a division of one stream into two streams. Okay, let's put this into an ultrafiltration unit uh, with a cutoff of, of somewhere between 1 and 500 kilodaltons. Kilodalton be, being the size of molecules. Again, in the retentate you find everything. So we had protein, sugar and salt in the feed to the ultrafiltration unit. And you have a protein, sugar and salt in the retentate from the ultrafiltration unit. And you have in the permeate sugar and salt because now the proteins are too big to pass through the membrane. Then in the next step you can put that into a nanofiltration unit and again uh, sugar and salt are in the feed to the nanofiltration unit and thus sugar and salt will be found in the uh, retentate because everything is found in the retentate. While sugar is now too big to pass through uh, the nanofiltration unit and a uh, nanofiltration unit has a uh, uh, sodium chloride retention of somewhere between 20 and 80 percent. Uh, so some salt will definitely come through. And then in reverse osmosis, uh, you have salt here and salt uh, is can be too big. Uh, re reverse osmosis uh, membrane can have a sodium chloride retention of 25 to 99 percent. Uh, so m most of the salt will remain in the retentate and you might get pure water here. So let's test your understanding. You have three components in the feed uh, and you have retention of substance A 100%, retention of substance B 50% and retention of substance C 0%. Express uh, the concentration in the permeate, so CAP, CCP and CBP as a function of the concentration in the retentate, CR, AR, CCR and CBR. And pause here and think of this illustration here and try to write down your answer. Okay, if you have 100% retention, that means that nothing goes through, right? So CA in the permeate must be zero. What about the next one? Uh, the C. Uh, I took C here before B. There is a reason for that. Uh, there is 0% uh, ret uh, retention here. So this membrane doesn't matter. You have the same concentration in both flows. What about the last one? The retention is 50%. If you guessed that it's uh, that it's 50% of the retentate, then you're pretty close. 
but it it's actually what you can say that it's less uh, than CBR and uh, it's likely to be less than uh, 0 0.5 CBR. Uh, but the problem is that the real retention is 1 minus CP uh, uh, divided with CM, where CM is the constant at the membrane surface. And the problem is that uh, the concentration at the membrane surface might actually be a lot higher uh, than the concentration in the retentate. And if it's a lot higher, then uh, the concentration of B in the permeate might actually be higher than 0 0.5 CBR. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, and this is uh, called concentration polarization, that the concentration near the membrane surface is actually higher. And we will come back to that. Just an example here I mentioned before in an earlier video uh, that lactose-free milk can be created using membrane filtration. So in this case here you have uh, skimmed milk coming in and you have an ultrafiltration unit and lactose and minerals goes through that uh, and then you have a non-filtration unit where lactose is too large to pass through. Uh, so you get lactose out there and the minerals you can get back into the lactose-free milk here. But wait a minute, I said that in the retentate you will have everything, right? Uh, so you will have lactose here as well, right? Yeah, you need to recircle this uh, to try to get as small concentrations as possible of lactose. And uh, you might want to add some enzymes to get rid of the, uh, the, the, f the final amounts of uh, lactose in the milk. So it's actually rather problematic to get rid of all the lactose. And in the final step, you add the cream again to, to get up uh, the fat content if you want that. Uh, there is a uh, plant in Malmö uh, in Sweden where they, they use this kind of method.